it ball blah, blah, blah. The ball Hello everyone, it's your girl Jay and today I'm here with part three of my April wrap up for 2020. I read a total of 26 books as of the day I'm filming this, which is April 24th. There are still six more days of April to go so I know that I'm going to have more books that I will be reading within that time. So I'll just end up posting like a random wrap up sometime during the month of May for the books that I read in the next six days because at the speed that I'm going there'll probably be six of them. So without further ado let us get started. The first book I will talk about in this part of the wrap up is Miss Everything. This is by Jennifer Weiner. Weiner still don't know how to say that name but I gave this a 3.5 out of five stars. This book follows two sisters, Joe and Bethy, who are growing up in the 1950s. They each have very clear roles in their family, but as they grow up, they experience troubles and traumas that change them in different ways, and it's like the story of that. This book is really interesting because it spans from the 1950s to 2016, and it kind of follows both the sisters' lives throughout that time. It's really interesting to see the experiences that both sisters had together and separately, and how those shaped their personalities and who they became in the future. It was also really interesting to see how the actions and decisions that one sister made ultimately affected the other sister. I also really liked how both of the sisters in this book and basically all of the characters were very relatable. I think that anybody who reads this book will be able to find themselves somewhere within the book. The one biggest complaint that I do have is that at times the book was very heavily history based and it was just kind of preachy at times. I also think that the book did end up dragging a little bit. It is actually a pretty thick book for the story that it told. It, like I said, it has a lot of history lessons kind of thrown in there and it could have been shortened in my opinion and still gotten the same point across without needing all the historical information as well. But overall, like, it was a good family-oriented book, and I ended up giving it 3.5 out of 5. Next book I have is The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary, and I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars. The book follows Tiffy and Leon, who share an apartment, though they've never met. They have an arrangement where Tiffy has the apartment from nighttime and the weekends, and Leon has the apartment during the daytime because he's a night shift worker. As time goes on, they begin writing little notes to each other, and they begin to start a friendship through this form of communication. It was really cute. I did not expect to like it as much as I did since there are a lot of mixed reviews on booktube, but I personally really enjoyed it. I think it was like super duper adorable. I really liked both Tiffy and Leon as main characters. I definitely enjoyed Tiffy's point of view better. She was very fun and quirky and the writing style of Leon's point of view was very choppy and it just like jarred me a little bit. I had to get used to the writing style. I also didn't expect the book to explore abusive relationships in any way, so that was really nice to see. I also really liked how Tiffy had so many people surrounding her and caring for her and like helping her through her abusive relationship. I was also a big fan of Leon and I liked how he had a like side plot going on with his brother and Richie and also the other side plot trying to find the lover of the guy from the nursing home? It wasn't a nursing home, but like the hospital wing. I also think one of the biggest highlights of the book was Richie Leon's younger brother and his story. I was very invested in his freedom. Overall, I think that it was a really cute book, but it also had very deep undertones that I really liked that were explored. So overall, like a good all-around read. Four out of four. Four out of four. Four out of five stars. Next book I have is The Wife Between Us by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen, and I ended up giving this a four out of five stars as well. The book follows Vanessa, who is Richard's ex-wife. She becomes obsessed with her husband's shiny new toy. She is constantly thinking about Nellie and the life that her and Richard built together while she is trying to piece herself back together. It's kind of hard to give a synopsis of this book without giving the whole thing away. It's definitely hard to give a synopsis of this book without giving the whole plot away. I think that this is one that's a lot better going in completely blind to the story. I'm personally a huge fan of unreliable narrators, so this book was just a grand old time for me. A lot of people do say that it is very predictable. I personally didn't find it that way, but I can see why now that I know what the whole plot twist is, why people say that. You can definitely 
pick it apart and figure it out, but I wasn't one of those people. I flew through this book very quickly just because I needed to know what was going to happen next with Richard and these two women. I was totally invested in the story. The one thing I will say is that I really hated the epilogue. I don't think that it needed to be in there. It was very dumb in my opinion, but overall this is a very quick fast-paced, very exciting read, so. The next book I have I was super disappointed in. It is Wind Witch by Sarah Denard. Denard? Denard? Denard. D d let me know which one it is. Denard or Denard? Anyways, I gave this a two out of five stars. This is the second book in the Witchland series, so I'm not going to give a synopsis, but like I said, I was very disappointed in this. I thought it was very boring. For a book that is supposed to be about like pirates and like things blowing up. I thought that it would be a lot more exciting, but I was just bored throughout the whole book. I did not care about any of the characters and what happened to them. The only two characters that I liked a little bit was Aiden, Alden, I don't know how to say his name either, and Izul. All of the characters kind of split up from each other, so everything is very disjointed and just didn't come together very well in my opinion. There's just so many plot lines that you were trying to follow. I just kind of got confused after a while. I was also super bitter that Izzild and Safi were separated literally the entire book because they were my favorite part of the first book, so the fact that I didn't get that in this book just did not work for me, so two out of five stars. Okay, the next four books are all part of the same series. I'm not going to talk too much about them because I have like a vlog of where I started reading them, so like if you really want to hear my thoughts, then go check that out, but also like it's books 8 to 11 in a series, so there's not really much to say unless you've read the whole series to know what's going on, but they are books 8 to 11 of the House of night series. I was going to call it House of Trash because that's what I've been calling it, but these are by Kirsten Cast and PC Cast. They are the eighth book, Awakened, ninth is Destined, tenth is Hidden, and eleventh is Revealed, and <laughs> these are not good books, but I gave the first one five out of five stars because like it was just such a nostalgia feeling for me since I hadn't read them since I was 12, and then to like dive back into the world and the characters was just wild to me. But then as I continued reading on the next three books, I gave them 3.5 because like they're not good. They're really bad books. They're very problematic. They are just like they're not well written, but I think the nostalgia factor of it and just like seeing these characters again and how messy they are just was a grand old time. So yeah, they're not good books. Like I would not suggest them unless you want like entertainment factor, but like be prepared for the problematic things that are in these books. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> and then the final book that I'm gonna talk about in this part of the wrap up was definitely my favorite of the month, I think. It is Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. So this book follows Mia Covera, who is on the lookout, on the hunt to join the Red Church, which is a school for assassins. When she arrives at the school, she begins her training in various different art forms that assassins need. She partakes in a number of trials in order to best the other students to become one of the four blades that are inducted into the Red Church. If she succeeds, she will be able to avenge her family's death that occurred many years ago and like that's basically the whole reason she wants to join this church and it's just like the story of that but it is such a wild ride. I was very scared to pick this book up because if you guys have read this book, everybody has read this book so I don't know why I'm saying if you have, but there are like these giant ass footnotes that I was just so intimidated about while reading, but after reading it I think that it brings such a unique twist to the story. The footnotes are mostly like backstory or like little jokes, comic relief to like help with the amount of violence and gore and stuff that's in this book, but it was such a nice touch in my opinion. I think the best part of this book are the characters. I loved every single one of them. Mia was my favorite. She's just such a fucking badass. Like, I love her. She is so sassy and snarky and bitchy, but like, in a fun way, if that makes any sense. Her dialogue with the characters and like also her inner dialogue was just so much fun to read. I am also the biggest fan of Mr. Kindly and the banter that Mia has with him. I was super interested in just like seeing the way that Mia thought and the things that she did were so not what I thought she was going to do, so I really liked that aspect of the book. I am also a huge fan of Trick. I'm not gonna get into it, 
but I'm bitter about some things that happened and I refuse to believe certain things like you know what I'm talking about if you've read this book like I refuse to believe it so that's all I'm gonna say about that I also loved the twist at the end I did not see it coming for miles I personally really liked the character that was involved so I was just like sitting there with my jaw on the floor when it happened because I was just like no that's wrong that's not what happened like I was ready to rewrite the whole series <laughs> because I didn't want it to be true I am so excited to get to book two I'm hoping that a certain character is back I know they're not going to be but we're pretending that they're going to be able to come back but I actually have it right here God's Grave because Victoria from Vic Shaz, I'll leave her link down below, texted me and was like, hey, I have the book if you want to read it. And I ran to her house because she lives around the corner from me and I like socially distanced handed it off and I'm just like so excited. So thank you so much to Vic. I'm like so excited to continue on with the story because like five out of five stars, I'm obsessed. All right, everybody. So that was my last wrap up for my three-part series of this month. I might have another random wrap-up for the six days that are still in April. Let me know down below if you've read any of these and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye!